But up first today, peanut breeders, plant pathologists, and economists, they're finding it harder to get research dollars for ongoing projects. But the Georgia Peanut Commission is continuing to fund projects with the most potential using money from a mandatory grower checkoff. Here's Rick Trepto with the story. This meeting in Tifton consisted of mainly farmers and researchers. The Georgia Peanut Commission heard reports on how projects funded in 2011 from the $2 per ton checkoff are spent. It kind of gives uh, us as, as board members and other interested farmers an opportunity to look at what may be uh, happening in the future. There was a reminder that from 2006 until now, five new high-yielding runner-type peanut varieties have been released. Drought resistance has been a trait. Top U.S. peanut breeder Bill Branch says benefits the whole industry. There's a brand new one out. We've got uh, Georgia-10T is the most recent release. It's a uh, uh, later maturing variety that has really good TSWV resistance. Uh, we're encouraging growers to plant it back in April like they used to doing. Variety development is constant. It's kind of like uh, whatever looks good at that time, uh, has good characteristics that are needed for uh, the industry. That's what we focus on. The commission members were told the new breeds require management against the familiar diseases. University of Georgia plant pathologist Tim Brenneman says in the past two years, they've learned white mold starts early in the season. Normally we don't start spraying peanuts till 30 or 35 days after planting, and our white mold sprays may not go out for another three or four weeks after that. And we're finding that white mold can come in early, especially the uh, seasons we've had where the very warm weather has started early in the season. And what has been surprising is the way that has translated into control all the way to the end of the season. Another research area in the soil-borne disease area are the nematodes that attack peanut plant roots. The Tifgard variety has produced 100% resistance. With some greenhouse uh, techniques where we measured the, uh, uh, the damage that the nematode was doing on the peanut root system. So now, of course, we have some much better techniques, that uh, some genetic markers that we can use to identify the gene uh, in, in leaf tissue from a seedling. So we can do it much more rapidly now. The peanut producers and all row crop farmers welcome new research. But for now, they're all worried about one thing, having enough water in their ponds to start this spring. In Tiff County, Georgia, I'm Rick Trepto for the Georgia Farm Monitor.